So today on this beginner series for Final Cut Pro X version 10.3 I'm just going to show you how to import media or video uh, files into uh, your Final Cut Pro events. So just coming over here, so just a quick recap uh, from some of our previous videos. We have our library here, it's our four squares with our four stars, and within our library we have a number of events which are also folders. Within our folders we then have projects, and these are our project examples that we have down here. So our events can contain um, simply uh, video files and folders themselves, they can contain projects and files, or they could just contain projects depending on what you, what you want, how you want to arrange your, your folders. It's just media management, it's how you organize them. So I'm going to begin first of all with this uh, Arial folder that I have here. So Final Cut Pro has a number of different ways of doing everything, so I'm just going to show you a couple. So the easiest way, which I showed on the uh, first video, is this downwards facing arrow. So once you've selected an event, a folder that you want to bring some files into, so I want to bring my aerial files into my aerial folder, and I'm going to go up here to the downwards facing arrow, and I'm going to click this, and here is where I have my media import window. So as you can see as well, as I hover over this um, option, there's also a keyboard shortcut of Command I. So if I use the keyboard Command I. I'm going to have the same media import in media import window open, and similarly at the top of the screen, file import media. It's going to bring you the same way. So this this there are several ways of doing the same thing in Final Cut. So you can just pick the one that you want. So I've selected my folder, add to existing event area. That's the folder I want to bring it into. So let's have a quick talk through this media import window. So the left hand side, these are where you are sourcing your files from. So the first option your camera is here. It's saying FaceTime. That's your um, webcam. Devices, I currently have a hard drive plugged in, um, with, this is where I'm going to source my files from. <coughs> Macintosh HD is the hard drive of the computer itself. And the favourites are usually things like your desktop and your, the, your individual user. If you had things like a mobile phone plugged in, or you had a memory card plugged in, or you had a camera plugged in, they would uh, begin to give additional destinations up here, and usually in the devices section. So once you select a location, I'm going to select a couple so you can see, as I make a different selection, for these locations, you can see down here in the middle that you get the sub-menus for each of these locations begin to appear. So I'm going to click on my hard drive because this is where I want to source my files from. So down here I've now got the initial subfolders that exist within the hard drive. This option here, if you click on this little downwards menu, oh, it's not coming options because it's not previous options. You click on folder and do the same thing. That's going to take me back to sort of previous options from where I was. So I'm going to open up this uh, 2017 project, because that's, oh no, that's <laughs> MD6031, that's the module I'm currently working on. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to select area. These are my folders that I'm going to work with. You can see as well, now we have our previous options that are appearing in our, in our drop-down menu. So I want all of these folders, but I also want folders that, that exist within the sub-menu. So there are various ways of, of selecting the files. So you can either select individual files and import them one by one, or you can select, um, make a selection using um, either the shift key. So if I select the first option, use the shift key on the keyboard, go to the bottom, select the bottom one, that highlights them all. Or you can use the command key. So if I hold the command key on the keyboard, and you can use that to select or deselect individual options. There's also the keyboard shortcut of command A, which is select all, and as you can see here, it gives you import all at the bottom. So I don't want to import everything. I'm going to use command A to select them all. But then I'm going to use command select to deselect this folder because I need to select them individually. So I want these three angles and I want this piece of audio. So in the same way that you can import your video, you can also import sound um, audio files, you can also import uh, photographs, um, I think you can even import things like uh, PDFs and Word documents and stuff if you want certain um, images to appear. So um, there's a variety of different types of files that you can import. So then I need to draw your attention over to this side of the screen. Um, First of all, to this option here. Now, this option here is files. Um, you get two options: just copy to library, and the second one is leave files in place. Now, I'm going to leave my files in place because I already have the files organized on my hard drive, and um, they're fine where they are. And I'm not going to move them. I'm not going to change the name of them. And I know that, yeah, they're they're organized in the way I want them to be in. Um, so I'm going to leave the files in place. If, however, you had a device such as a memory card. Um, a camera, a phone that's not going to be plugged in the next time you're editing, you're going to have to choose the option of copy to library because copy to library then copies those files, makes a full copy of all of those files onto your library so that it's not lo lo looking for that device every time you edit. 
Um, it would also struggle to edit, um, to be cop constantly copying and pasting and searching for files from something um, that's as low and as that's as low power and as small as like a memory card or phone. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're if you're copying files is required for any device that won't be present the next time you want to go into your edit. If, however, your files are already in place and you choose copy to library, it's just going to double up the number of files that you have. So you probably don't want to be um, generating double the files. If these files, for example, you know, they're kind of like um, mm -hmm. five, ten gigabytes each, and then you're doubling that, you're going to you know, create lots of additional unnecessary um, uh, files onto your onto your device, your hard drive, or your computer, or your external hard drive. So I'm going to leave my files in place. Then down here to where it says keywords, I'm not too fussed about these at the moment, you can always add these later if you need to. Um, the, all of these options here, you can kind of generally, if you want to use these, you can um, bring them in at a later date if you need to. If you're going to be working with some with something like Multicam, things like your optimizer, or proxy, or options that you, you can um, begin to work with, but don't worry too much about those for the moment. We'll go into those when we go into more, more advanced editing. So once I've got the selections I want, I'm just going to do import selected. And then immediately, my files are there to use. Now, if you were, uh, Final Cut Pro saves everything automatically as you go all of the time. If, however, you are um, copying files to the library, you can see there's a little bit of this kind of going on up here. If you're copying files to the library, you need to make sure that this process is completed before you um, take away the device. So if you had a memory card, or if you had a phone or a camera plugged in, um, just because you see the files here does, and, they're, and they're also already ready to use doesn't mean that the, that the uh, process of importing has completed and if you were to pull out that memory card before the process is com has complete um, the file transfer won't work and you'll have missing files will appear up here. So I'm just going to click up here so you can see you can monitor the background tasks and the one you'll be looking at is importing media and then just checking that that's completed before uh, pulling out any devices that you may be importing from. So that's me here. You can see I've got three files here, three different angles of the same um, performance. And down here, these are these are all video files indicated by in our inspector here. If we look from here all the way across, you can see our video files. We've got video, sound information, information here, and then this one here because it's an audio file, it it ind it's indicated by a, a series of blue sound waves. There's no video reference to that. There's no visuals attached to that at all. And then you can see that my uh, options here information, metadata, all that kind of thing. They're, um, they're different and there's no video option available because there's no sound. So those are all of our options there and it really is just as simple as that. So within your folders, I'm going to just do that process again. This is the one I kind of tend to use the most often but you can also use your command I which is quite handy. So, oh I, I needed, sorry, I needed these additional files. Let's go back to their area. I also want to import my interviews. So these, oh, and I want the edited files, not the original. So I want these two files here, leave files in place, and I want to import those as well. So I've now got my interview and my audio that's associated with this with this folder. So these are all the ones I want to have in here. Festival ones, similarly, going back to my media import window. Let's find my uh, original folder. Festival. I might not want them all, but let's just take a pile of them for the moment. So there, I've also got audio tracks and logos here too. So let's import a few video files. Let's get some of our video files there. I'm going to go back to the folder. I'm going to import some logos, which I might want to use. These are image files, some PNGs and JPEGs. And then I might also want to import some audio tracks. And now these are all kind of quick condensed MP3s anyway. In a previous uh, tutorial I indicated up here that you can import things like kind of photos and um, music from things like iTunes and photos. However, if you're dealing with high quality audio, things like kind of .wav files and things like that, and um, AIF, no, AIF, so there are images. Um, yeah, if you're work working with high quality um, audio files, it's, you tend not to want to bring them in through iTunes because those are compressed versions of the audio and then they're going to be compressed again when they're exported. So if you want to retain the highest quali quality audio possible, I would advise you bringing those audio tracks in on their own in the same way that you bring in your visual files to maintain the, uh, the optimal quality of your audio upon export. Just a wee note there. Um, and then I'm going to bring in my flamenco, just so I have all of my examples here. Ready to use, so I want all three of these. Import. 
and there we go. So you can see here, I've also got my project folder. So here I've got my Arial. My Arial's got a project, which currently doesn't have anything in it. I've got some video files, sign files, more sign files. My festival folder has got um, a project. It's got some video files, audio files, and logos. My Flamenco currently just has video files. And this one here, which I just indicated here to show you, this one just contains projects. So if you just wanted to take each one of these projects, for example, and pull them into one particular folder so you always know where to find those. That's another way of organizing it, which would be completely up to yourself. So that's um, all that's involved in the media import process. So in the next video, we'll have a look at how we begin um, creating a rough cut um, of our video clips. Thank you very much.